okay welcome to <clears throat> electrical machine lecture uh in the previous lecture we were discussing about uh, testing of dc machine the first method that is the direct load test or brake test uh, already discussed today we will see the indirect test or indirect method of testing so in this method a no load machine losses are first measured by suitable test then the additional losses are on load are determined from the machine data in order to calculate the efficiency it means that whatever the indirect method of testing are there first we will try to calculate the no load losses if the no load losses are known or it has been calculated now it is easy to add the variable loss that is the armature copper loss or the losses which is based on the load condition so in this way the efficiency can be calculated now very prime objective of indirect method of testing is that to reduce the losses and the method should be applicable for higher capacity motor so this uh, indirect test whatever the disadvantage in the direct load test are overcome by the indirect method of testing like restriction of the capacity in case of direct load test it is difficult to conduct the load test on the higher capacity motor like 25 hp 100 hp and 50 hp motors whereas under no load test the input power required is will be very small and whatever the instruments are the range of the instruments also uh, sufficient to measure the no load current and no load say losses in the machine so therefore indirect method of testing is more economical and suitable for all capacity of the machine so the first method in the indirect method is the swimburn test swimburn test is nothing but the no load test means we are going to conduct the no load test over the dc motor so but this type of test is conducted only on the constant flux machine that is the uh, like a dc shunt motor where the flux is constant it means that when the flux is constant the speed of the motor is constant so it is easy to estimate the constant losses including the iron frictional and windage loss as well as the shunt field copper loss so under no load condition the machine absorb the power to overcome uh the constant losses in the machine and the armature copper losses are negligible is small see in this diagram say so this is the simple dc shunt motor in dc shunt motors the instruments are connected the input power or applied voltage is going to measure with the help of voltmeter whereas the current drawn by motor is measured by the ammeter say it is a uh, Uh, a meter whose value is say i0 at no load condition we will suffix a zero is stand for the no load condition whereas the shunt field current remain constant either the machine is loaded or machine under no load condition means the dc motor at load condition or no load condition the current in the shunt field winding remain unchanged whereas the armature current is the function of load as the load increases over the motor uh, armature draws more current so therefore the copper losses in the armature circuit or copper losses over the brushes depend upon the load condition so these are the load losses whereas whereas the losses which occurred in the shunt field winding the losses which occurred on the iron and windage frictional loss which is depend upon the voltage iron losses are depend upon the voltage and whereas the windage and frictional losses are depend upon the speed for the dc shunt motor particularly uh, the uh, speed is somewhat constant therefore we consider the windage and frictional loss are constant so constant losses is the iron loss windage and frictional loss and shunt field copper loss these are the constant losses for the dc shunt motor whereas the armature copper loss is the variable loss because it depend upon the load condition so now once we connect the instrument uh, the suitable instruments depend upon the 
a rating of the motor so the instruments whatever the instruments either a meter voltmeter speedometers uh, these are selected depend upon the uh, capacity of motor or nameplate reading which is available on the uh, on the motor uh, manufacturer side so therefore uh, the instruments are connected here the first we will run the motor at rated voltage and rated speed as per the nameplate means we will apply the rated voltage whatever the rated voltage is there it may be a 220 volt 500 volt 400 volt whatever the rating uh, which is uh, shown over the nameplate and speed we will run the speed we will run the motor by adjusting this rheostat in such a way that the speed of the motor under no load condition is a rated one so under no load condition motor will draw hardly 8 to 10 percent of the uh, rated value so it is a no load current is i0 say for example for particular motor the full load current is 90 ampere so it will draw around 8 to 9 ampere so this 8 to 9 ampere is a manageable uh, current which can be measured with the help of our instruments those are available in the labs or some uh, laboratories whereas the armature current is uh, again it is a no load condition so it is very small as compared to the full load condition the shunt field current will remain same from no load to full load note the readings of the instruments connected so whatever the instruments are there voltage no load current no load armature copper uh, no load uh, armature current shunt field current and speed we are going to observe so we will uh, make the table that is a supply voltage applied voltage no load current i0 no load armature current i a0 shunt field current and speed whatever is the speed of the motor as per this one now we will start doing the calculation from the given data so it requires only one reading only one reading no load data is uh, uh, sufficient to calculate the efficiency at any desired percentage of load so now we will consider let V is the supply voltage in volt. I is the current drawn by motor in ampere. That is the load current. It is the load current. Okay. It is a load current. Means when the motor is loaded or it is say rated current. Instead of this one, we will consider it is a rated current. We will consider say This is the rated current. This is rated current or full load current. Uh, sorry, this is. Uh, <clears throat> rated current i0 is the current drawn by motor at no load condition armature current in ampere again it is a rated one or it is a load condition rated current i a0 is the armature current at no load condition r a is the armature resistance in ohm therefore the constant losses is nothing but the Say the constant loss is WC, which is equal to the no load input minus no load armature and brush draw. So what we are doing, we are calculating the no load loss. So this is the total power input, total power input, which comprise of uh, constant losses in the iron, shunt field, windage and frictional. So if you subtract the copper loss, which is occurring in the armature, so rest of the power input is going to use to overcome the losses. So therefore, the constant loss is nothing but the no load input minus no load armature and brush copper loss. So WC is equal to V into I0. I0 is no, no load current minus IA0 RA. It is the copper loss in the armature at no load condition minus brush copper loss. 
So whatever the brush copper loss, it is given. Suppose the voltage drop across the brushes are given, then we have to consider. If it is not mentioned, then we will consider the, the losses are negligible small. Now let the machine is running as a motor. So efficiency when running, running as a motor, motor input V into I, where V is the supply voltage or applied voltage, I is the rated current. So this is the rated input. Armature copper loss, IA0, because IA is nothing but the uh, armature current under load condition or rated condition. So this is the rated copper loss or the uh, copper loss at given load condition. So total losses, the constant loss, which already uh, determined from the above equation. So constant losses plus the variable loss. So it is the total loss. Therefore, motor efficiency is nothing but input minus losses is nothing but the output divided by input multiplied by 100. So motor efficiency become V into I minus armature copper loss minus WC. That is the constant losses. Okay. So divided by the input power. So it is possible to calculate the efficiency of machine acting as a motor. Now the same machine because the construction of uh, DC uh, machine for generator and motor is same. So DC motor can be used as a DC generator and vice versa. So now when the machine running as a generator or acting as a generator, output power is nothing but the terminal voltage multiplied by the current uh, supplied to the external circuit. So this is the power output in watt. V into I is the power output. Whereas input is nothing but the input uh, is nothing but the output plus losses. So input is equal to V into I is the power output plus losses. So what are the different losses? Different losses are nothing but the constant loss and variable loss. So these are the variable loss, armature copper loss and the constant loss. So total input is equal to V into I copper losses plus constant losses. And hence it is possible to calculate the efficiency acting as a generator or generator efficiency. So output divided by losses, output plus losses, so input. So here, this is the efficiency of generator. Now, what is the advantage of this method? The question arises here, only the no, no, uh, no load data is sufficient to calculate the efficiency at any desired percentage of load. Say, for example, the motor full load current is 100 ampere. Whereas the data, uh, the machine is conducted at no load. So the current is say 10 ampere and voltage is 200 volt for some particular motor. So the losses are 2000 watt at no load condition. So this is the power input at no load condition. Once we calculate the constant losses. Now, say for example, if you want to calculate the efficiency as 50%. So take the, the current is 50. So 50%, so 50 ampere. So I is equal to 50, IA is equal to 50 minus say shunt field current. Say if you want to calculate 75%, so 75 ampere is there. If you want to calculate at 100% load, so we can calculate the efficiency at 100 ampere. If you want to calculate the efficiency or losses at 10% overload, so we can use the current is equal to 110 ampere, that is a 10% overloading and hence, we can calculate the efficiency. The meaning is that from the only input data, it is possible to predict the efficiency and losses in the DC motor. So this is the major advantage of the Swinburne test. That Swinburne test requires only no load data or no load power during its test. And the efficiency and the losses can be calculated, can be calculated over the a uh, wide range of uh, percentage load over the motor. So if it is like that, it is possible to know the table. Let this is the percentage load, percentage load, load current, say for example, 100 ampere, so 20%, so 20 ampere, 40%, 40 ampere and so on. We can calculate the power input. We can calculate the power input. We can calculate the variable loss. That is the armature copper loss. Constant losses will remain same. And hence, we can calculate the efficiency. 
so uh, it is possible to uh, know the efficiency at any desired percentage of load from the no load data and hence this and therefore this is the major advantage of simban test now advantage of simban test the power required to test a large machine is small higher capacity motor can be tested because the test require only no load power input thus this method is economical and convenient method of testing for the dc machines second advantage as the constant losses is known the efficiency can be predetermined or predicted at any percentage of load so here we have uh, made one table for uh, for this sentence now what is the disadvantage if there is a uh, armature reaction due to the armature reaction the flux over the periphery of armature get changed and this will change the iron losses this cannot be accounted by the method so this is the one drawback second drawback is that as the swimburn test is performed at no load condition therefore commutation on the full load cannot be determined whether it is satisfactory or not whether the temperature rise within the specified limit or not so as this is the advantage of direct load test in case of direct load test it is uh, possible to know the mechanical vibration commutation any sparking over the brushes at the same times what is the temperature rise but in this method the motor is not loaded so when it is not loaded there is no question of temperature rise there is no question of large current and hence the effect of commutation effect of armature reaction effect of vibration or the sound it cannot be accounted so this is the uh, disadvantage of this method there are some limitation these two limitations are there machine having a constant flux are only eligible for the swimburn test suppose the flux is not constant we cannot account the constant losses because the constant losses comprises of shunt field copper loss iron losses which is mostly depend upon the fluxes the speed uh, also constant for the constant flux machine therefore it is possible to estimate or consider the constant windage and frictional loss therefore this machine is suitable only for the constant flux machine like dc shunt motor and leveled compound generator or compound motor whereas in case of the dc series motor the flux is not constant similarly the change in speed is very large from no load to full load isn't it so that's why this method is not suitable for the dc series motor or the motor which having variable flux so this is the advantage disadvantage and limitation of simbun test so now uh, we will uh, see some of the numericals here a 220 volt dc shunt motor no load takes at no load takes a current of 2.5 ampere no load condition the current is 2.5 ampere the resistance of armature and fields are 0.8 ohm and 200 ohm respectively estimate the efficiency of motor when the when the input current is 20 ampere so what are the this one so armature current motor takes the no load current i0 is the 2.5 ampere voltage is 220 volt whereas armature resistance ra 0.8 ohm and shunt field resistance ish rsh is equal to 200 yes and current load current is equal to 20 ampere so first we will calculate the ish because we want to estimate the no load copper losses no load armature copper losses so it is 220 divided by 200 it is 1.1 ampere so no load armature 
करंट आई ए जीरो इज इक्वल टू टू पॉइंट फाइव इज द नो लोड करंट माइनस से विल टेक वन स्टेप मोर सो इट इज आई जीरो माइनस आई एस एच सो इट इज टू पॉइंट फाइव माइनस वन पॉइंट वन इक्वल्स टू वन पॉइंट फोर एम पी आर सो दिस इज द शंट फील्ड नो लोड कॉपर लॉस सो नो लोड नो लोड आर्मेचर सी यू लॉस इक्वल्स टू आई ए जीरो स्क्वेयर आर ए सो इट इज वन पॉइंट फोर एन टू पॉइंट एट सो नो लोड कॉपर लॉस इक्वल्स टू वन पॉइंट सिक्स वैट नो लोड इनपुट नो लोड इनपुट इज इक्वल टू वी इंटू आई जीरो सो टू ट्वेंटी मल्टीप्लाइड बाय टू पॉइंट फाइव इट इज फाइव हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी वैट देर फोर कॉन्स्टेंट लॉस डब्ल्यू सी इज इक्वल टू नो लोड इनपुट माइनस नो लोड आर्मेचर लॉस सो इट इज इक्वल टू फाइव हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी माइनस वन पॉइंट सिक्स इट इज फाइव हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी एट पॉइंट फोर वैट सो दिस इज द कॉन्स्टेंट लॉस डब्ल्यू सी ओके नाउ वेन वेन लोड करंट आई एक इज इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी एमपीयर देर फोर आर्मेचर करंट आई ए इज इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी माइनस वन पॉइंट वन इक्वल्स टू वेन द लोड करंट इज इक्वल टू दिस वन सो इट इज इक्वल टू हियर आई थिंक लोड करंट इज थर्टी एम पी load current is it is 30 ampere it is 30 ampere so when the load current is 30 ampere thirty ampere so thirty so it is uh load current is not correctly given here it is load current is 32 it is 32 so here also 32 It is thirty-two ampere. So thirty-two. So it is thirty point nine ampere. So armature CU loss. Armature CU loss is equal to thirty point nine bracket square into point eight. 
so it is 764 watt so this is the variable loss constant loss we know therefore total losses is equal to constant loss wc plus armature cu loss so it is equal to 764 764 plus the constant losses already determined 548.4 watt so this is the cost total losses equal to 1312 watt so it is this much wet now input power input power is equal to v into i so it is 220 multiplied by so there are some mistakes in the numerical i think So here it is multiplied by 32. Just we have to calculate either the answer is correct. So here it is equals to 220 multiplied by 32 so 740 watt okay this is way now uh, what is the power this is power output output is equal to 7040 minus so it is 764 is the constant losses plus uh, 548 is the cost, uh, armature copper loss constant loss and armature copper loss so 548 so, sorry this is total one uh, 1312 so here the output power is Five thousand seven hundred and twenty eight watt. So, this is the power output. Now, once the power output is there, it is easy to calculate efficiency. Efficiency equals to power output five seven five thousand seven hundred and twenty eight divided by 7440 into 100 so efficiency is equal to 81% 81.3% so it is the first numerical second the no load test of a 444.76 kilowatt 220 volt 
DC shunt motor gives the following figure or following readings. Input current 13.25, that is the no load current. Field current 2.55. Resistance of armature at 75 degree because when the motor running for a long time, the temperature increases and therefore the temperature uh, also affect over the resistance of winding. So this is 0.032 is the field, uh, is the armature resistance and the brush drop is 2 volt. Estimate the load current and efficiency. So here no load current I0, it is 13.25 ampere. Field current ISH is equal to 2.55 ampere. Armature resistance RA is equal to 0.032 ohms. And voltage drop across the brush is 2 volt. So first we will calculate the no load power input. No load power input. So it is V into I0 which is equal to 220 volt is the supply voltage and current is 13.25. So the no load power is equal to 2915 watt. Armature current no load armature current IA0 is equal to I0 minus ISH so which is equal to 13.25 minus 2.55 equals to 10.7 ampere so this is the no load therefore no load armature CU loss. So it is equal to IA0 square RA. So it is 10.7 square multiplied by 0 0.032 ohms and the no load power equals to 3.6 watt. 3.6 Wet. Brush brush CU loss or the power loss in the brushes it is 2 volt multiplied by the current 10.7 the same current is going to flow from the brushes so uh, brush copper loss at no load it is very important at no load so it is equal to 21.4 Watt. Now total no load CU loss or the variable loss. So it is 21.4 plus uh, 3.6 is the copper loss. So it is 20. 5 watt okay so this is the no load input no load cu loss now constant losses constant loss which is equal to no load input minus no load cu loss or variable loss because it depend upon the load current. So no load input is nothing but 2915 minus 25. So the constant loss is WC is equal to 2890 2 Watt. So this is the constant loss. Now once we know the constant loss, we can calculate the other parameter. Now, full load condition. So here the 
armature current or the motor current is not given so we consider let i a is the full load armature current full load armature current so under such condition uh, we can calculate the full load current full load current is equal to ia plus ish full load armature current plus shunt field current so which is equal to ia plus 2.55 ampere this is the full load current i now full load power input full load power input is equal to v into i a plus 2.55 watt this is the voltage and this is the full load current now uh, what is the output motor output as it is given it is the 44.76 kilowatt it is 44 44 point 76 into 10 raise to 3 watt as it is given this is the from the rating of motor it is it given that this is the output of motor so uh, what would be the equation input output power input power input is equal to power output plus constant loss plus cu loss now here the cu loss are given into two step that is the armature copper loss as well as the uh, brush copper loss so power input it is v into ia plus shunt field current it is 2.55 whereas power output is 44.76 into 10 raise to 3 plus constant losses plus constant loss it is given as wc plus copper loss it is ia let we have considered the copper loss ia square into 0 0.032 plus brush loss so 2 volt multiplied by ia so we will arrange this one it is 220 into bracket ia plus 2.55 is equal to 44.76 into 10 raise to 3 plus constant losses is given 200 uh, 2890 watt plus 0.032 ia square plus twice ia so if you multiply this equation uh, this one bracket so the total equation become 0 0.032 ia square minus 218 ia plus 47090 is equal to 0 so it is a quadratic equation by solving this quadratic equation IA is equal to 218 plus or minus under root 
218 square minus 4 into 0 0.032 into 470090 divided by divided by 2 into 0 0.032. So uh, the equation by solving this one, armature current I is equal to IA plus ISH. So the current is equal to 223.5. Means here the current is equal to 223.5 plus uh, 2.55 so armature current is 226 ampere similarly we can find the full load input full load input is equal to V into I equals to 220 multiplied by 226 equals to 49,720 watt. This is the input. So efficiency, power input, power output is 44.76 kilowatt. So 760 watt divided by 49,720 into 100. So efficiency is equal to 90%. So see, only from the no load data, uh, it is possible to calculate the efficiency, current, everything from the, uh, from the uh, only no load input power. So this is the advantage of Swinburne test. Thank you. Next time we'll see the some more numerical over this method. Thank you.